Hi there, folks. I am Emily. And I'm Elk. And we are here to let you know two things. First of all, I did figure out the name of the show that, or the, the thing that Brian Darcy James did based off of Meredith Wilson's writing of The Music Man. So Meredith Wilson and his wife, Rennie, did an album called And Then I Wrote The Music Man. And then Brian Darcy James and Kelly O'Hara played Wilson and his wife in an off-Broadway entertainment based on the album. I know all of you were waiting a week to find out this information, and apparently you haven't heard of Wikipedia, so couldn't figure it out yourself, so whatever. So that's news number one. News number two is that hardcover books are much better than paperback in building a book wall. Which seems kind of obvious and was something I tried to explain, but Emily thinks that everything has to be learned empirically and through experimentation, no matter if it makes sense in the brain. I am a scientist at heart, and I need to experiment and follow a very specific method before I do something. I'm not just going to trust what you tell me. I'm going to do my own research and try to figure things out, because I don't just trust blindly. Yeah, she doesn't believe in the, you know, don't make the same mistake I did. And for some reason, she has to sing whistle while you work every single time she does an experiment. So if someone could explain that to me, that would be appreciated. Uh, I've tried to explain it to you 20 times. It's not possible to work without whistling. And if you're going to whistle while you work, you might as well whistle a song that is called Whistle While You Work. Okay. This is what I'm dealing with. And in order to try to escape it, I turn to Hillbilly Elegy. <laughs> Our segues are fantastic. I think we need to have... You're really getting better. I'm very impressed. <laughs> so Hillbilly Elegy is a book that came... It's by J.D. Vance, and it came out in 2016. The book originally came out then, and then... It sold like a gazillion copies as well it should because it was fantastic. It is fantastic. And then the film version of it by Ron Howard just came out this year and was it came out on Netflix. So those who borrowed your friend's Netflix account because you canceled Netflix over cuties, everybody remember that happened? No? You know what I mean? There's so much going on these days. Um, so our ratings for it is violence is a two, language is a four, romance is a one. It's actually, it's not that a lot of the, the pearl clutching um, ratings are not that bad. The language is obviously terrible, but none of it feels um, gratuitous. It's just, this no. is the way they spoke. And I'm not saying that to excuse it, but I'm saying it that, I'm just putting it in context. And the short story is, is that J.D. Vance is writing kind of a memoir of growing up um, in this, you know, in the, as a hill, as hillbilly and, you know, Appalachia, Appalachian, um, hills or whatever it is and he, it's none of it he talks about just how you know generational poverty and how it could lead to drug use or unemployment and things like that and none of it the best thing about it is that it didn't feel like he was trying to um, make this write the story of like victimization or the story of people who need to be saved whatever it just felt like he was giving voice to these people that we all kind mm -hmm. of know of but don't really know yeah. about <laughs> And that's part of what made it so good. And he focused so much on it, on his family. And it wasn't, he was just like, I love my family. My family's so great. And the way he speaks about his sister is also, he's very, he speaks very highly of his sister and the people in his life that were there for him, even though there are, they are imperfect people, but he does credit them for being where he is and how he is, which is, it was just, it was, it was just really nice. And it's a great read. It's, it, it reads very, uh, it's a very easy read. So it, yeah, it was yeah. like reading a novel, which is what good, Good nonfiction should be as easy as easy as reading a novel, and it was. Yeah, we don't need like narrative nonfiction to be its own category. All nonfiction should be narrative, <laughs> basically. Yes. Yeah. So does, and it's also it's not that long, it. so it's it's you can you can read it. Oh yes, and it wasn't. Um, he wasn't trying to make a point. I don't think. He was just trying to tell a story, which you sort of already said, but I think it's really important to mention that in particular because right now the book and the movie are taking a lot of flack because of his political views and also the political views of the people in the story, even though politics hardly comes up in the book. And he mentions that at the beginning, he says, this isn't a political book, I'm not a sociologist, he does mention a few studies or reports that he's read when it helps to explain something, but that's 
maybe four times throughout the book. He's really just telling his own personal story and what he experienced in this world. And the movie does a pretty similar thing. It tells a story differently because that's what movies do. But he wasn't trying to make a point. He was just trying to say, hey, this is how I grew up. You've probably heard about hillbillies, but you don't really know much about them. So let me tell you a little bit about them. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so insightful. But he also says, like, this is not the definitive work on my like, like This is just my story. Right. Right. So you'll see, like, a lot of truths in it. But, like, and the biggest thing is, like, now you'll see articles of, like, don't read Hillbilly Elegy. Read these books instead. And it's like, why can you not also read Hillbilly Elegy? It's, you can't deny his story. Like, if it happened to him, you can't deny it. And it's also good because he doesn't, it's not like, oh, look, we're all victims of this, that, whatever. There's no big speeches and big fixes or whatever. It's just... You know, we'd love to see this happen or that happen, but it is not, it is, it's, it's really just like, I'm just going to share right now. And it, that's also kind of refreshing because everything these days has to have the political point or this point or that point. Like he's married to, I think his wife is, I think she's, Indian. I don't know if she's Indian or like her parents are Indian. Like, I don't know if she actually immigrated from me. I think, I don't know if she grew up in America. Mm. He probably says it, but he really doesn't. Sh- he yeah. sort of mentions that it's not like typical for, you know, someone from his background to come home married to a quote unquote minority, but it's really not, he doesn't make that the focus of a story, which you feel like if a book would have been written now, it would have been all about that. Like, and it's just not, you just see how they're really just there for each other. And it seems like they're in a good relationship and that's yeah. it. It's just like, these are the people who, who brought me to where I am today. And like, that's the way, that's how it should be. <laughs> like we acknowledge yeah. where she's coming from and kind of her background. And, but it's just, it's part of it. It just, this is all part of it. It's not it. So. Right. That was awesome. That was, yeah, I think one of the striking things about the movie, as opposed to the book, is how, well, I mean, it's actually, it's, it's really a faithful adaptation in that it, it, I don't think a faithful adaptation, and we've talked about this before, it doesn't mean literally putting the book into movie form, but it means do you keep the same feel and are you telling the same type of story that the author was intending and I think Ron Howard who definitely directed and produced the film did but what he really focuses on are basically like these four women in J.D. Vance's life and and that's true even in even in the book as he wrote it you do get to learn more about his papa his grandfather and it was a little bit disappointing that his papa didn't play any role really in the movie because that would have been an interesting character to show a little bit more of but it was interesting that it was basically his mama or his grandmother his mother his sister and then his girlfriend who becomes his wife how they're all the people helping him and supporting him i thought that was interesting yeah and the book um the film also is is pretty similar with all these ratings also that because there could have been like big romantic moments and they don't put that in because it's not that's right. not it. It wasn't needed to tell the story. You kind of already you enter once they're already pretty deep in the relationship with each other and you see that, you know, they have the strong relationship, him and his girlfriend, that's gonna be the wife. And that was also right. and they, there could have been scenes with the mom that the mom goes from boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend and right. they don't they don't go there with it, which is it was so it was so good to see that. And I mean if you see interviews, Ron Howard talks about how um I don't even know that he, like so much of what JD Vance is writing about it kind of feels felt familiar to him too. He didn't realize that like everybody calls grandma like mama or whatever that like, oh, I called my grandmother that too. So that's why he focused so much on the family, which did leave out all the the messaging and the politics and whatever. It's just, let's tell you a story about a family. And it's true. It's the yes. four, it's, it's basically four ish women that, that made him, you know, that brought him to where he was. And he gives them so much credit that even though they're kind of messed up and imperfect, but if it wasn't for them, he, he still credits them for, for bringing him to the point where he got to, like for supporting me and getting right. me through and all that stuff. So that's why also there are a few scenes that were also very, like they say so much, like when it opens, cause it's also interesting. The film, like J.D. Vance is not really a character in the film. He's there, but he's more there to tell the story. Cause it really mm-hmm. does focus on the mom and the grandmother and also kind of the sister. Yeah. But J.D. Vance is kind of just there to move things along, sort of. Cause yeah. like if someone has to be like the, the spoke, like it's, it's interesting. So, like, and you have a scene where he who, goes, because he, he goes to Yale, and it talks about in the book that I didn't realize how much financial support there are for people like me. 
right? We always thought, all, right. we all think that we can't end up in an Ivy League college. We can't end up in any of these places. And for me, for us to go, there's so much financial support available for us, right? Which gives us an advantage over like, let's say a middle-class family because they don't get so much financial right. support, but we get that. Um, so you have that scene where she's like, okay, here's your tuition for next year. And it's like $21,000. And she's like, I was like, I know it's not as much as last time. And he's like, I'm already working three jobs. I can't afford it. And you're like, wow, that tells you so much about where he's coming from. That $21,000 is such a struggle for Yale. Like anybody else. Right, for Yale. Yeah, for middle-class families, they're like, okay, we'll figure it out. But for him, it's like, I don't know how I could afford this. I'm already working three jobs. And you're like, does nobody have the money to give him? But like, no, nobody has the money to give him. Um, right. And then you point out the and scene the, also. Yeah, sorry, yeah. The different credit cards that he yes. has to use to pay for his mother, trying to get his mother into the rehab, the rehab yes. center. And it's like, okay, 50 on this credit card, 1,000 on this credit card yeah. or whatever it is yes. that's split up. Yeah. And um, when she's washing like the uh, the disposable cutlery by the barbecue thing, it's very subtle. Then the sister is, oh. he comes in to speak to his sister and she's like busy washing like the, the disposable. Uh, it's, it's crazy. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. yeah. And um, there's that scene where he goes to the dinner. It's like kind of like a job interview sort of thing. It's, it's like a networking dinner, right? And he sits mm-hmm. it at the table and they're like, oh, you're coming from like, this must be a different world for you because you must go home and be like, oh, all these rednecks. It's like, oh, we prefer hillbilly. But the, the joke, not the joke is the, the interesting part is that they automatically assume that he thinks that the hillbillies are a different world. Not that Yale's a yes. different world. And for him, Yale is the different world. Like, what fork do I use? How do I do this? What kind of wine do I order? They they automatically assume like, oh, you're coming to Yale. You must be like the white sheep of the family. Like you must be the one who's like is denying the hillbilliness, right? That you're walking away from. You're become this white collar person now. You're going to deny the blue collar. Right. And you're separating yourself from the blue collar. And and it's not. It's actually the opposite. He's so proud. of, And you see the way he defends his mother and whatever. Like my mom was a single mom and she got her way through nursing school and whatever. Even though the mother is also a drug addict and also can't keep a marriage together. Right. And these things. But he, he finds all these things to celebrate about them. It's a very interesting take that they did there. And that's why also he doesn't, he does talk about, oh, the, the, the rampant poverty and all these things, but it's never like X did this to us or if only X would solve this for us, right? He thinks right. the community needs to come together and help the community. Not that like, oh, we need some superhero to come in and save us. Which, is, it's, which it's, he says in the yeah. book also. I mean, yeah. in the movie, it's not really pointed out but in the book. He says... Not even necessarily from a political standpoint, just from a, because he knows how the community works. He's like, look, people need help. People need jobs. And there might be some government or outside fixes that will help. But so many of the problems are internal, like the drug use or the family dissolution or the lack of focus on education. Or even it was really interesting, I thought, how he said that they are, they report really high, um, observance of religion and also they report high church attendance but in actuality it's not a community that goes to church very often and religion is in the home but it's not a communal thing so he talks about we need community we need certain values you know value on education and on keeping your family together not having kids young all of those things yeah it was i it was um as i was reading it so have you seen the tv show dave it's no. a Hulu show, and it's about this Jewish rapper whose uh, rapper name is Lil Dicky, but the TV show is called Dave because I guess his real name is Dave. And when I watched it, it's all clutch all the pearls. I mean, it's like <laughs> all the inappropriate stuff is in there. But I got to learn about this, like this rap culture, and it's a culture that I never would have necessarily sought out or known anything like they use all this slang that I've never heard of in the way of, you know, how do you respect people? How do you make friends? And I felt like that le- reading this book, that this was a community of people that I probably would never come into contact with, yeah. or I shouldn't say never, but haven't yet. Don't know when I would, but I got to learn about, oh, these are real people. They're not like he's related to them. Hatfields or the McCoys, right? Through his grandfather. That's like a legend, the Hatfields and McCoys. But it's like, oh no, these are real people. And yeah. they they have real lives too. And they have real relationships and hopes and dreams and mistakes that they've made. They're just people who happen to live somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's also so, like there's no, especially in the film. Like usually these kinds of films are like, oh, it's Oscar bait, it's just that whatever. There's some big speech moment that comes in of like someone has to deliver these like lines and these lines and these lines, and it's not like that. There's a few one-liners yeah. that get put in, and, but they don't feel like. I mean, maybe they are, maybe they're not supposed to be like that, but I didn't feel like, oh, this is the one-liner. This is it. It didn't feel like everything no. just kind of just flowed together. It just went like. That's probably also, it's kind of, we don't, they don't really make films like this anymore. We're just, we're just going to tell you a story that doesn't involve anything else besides for the story. Like, These people. Yeah. This story. Yeah. It's not a yeah. commentary. It's not an anything. It's just a story about family. Yeah. Um, it was, I don't it was know such an we... interesting thing to. Yes. My favorite scene, and then I don't know if we actually explained our ratings yet, but I just want to tell you one of my favorite scenes that for me, did maybe what a big speech would do in explaining who a, one of the characters was without a big speech. When uh, JD's mom, one of the times she's going crazy and the whole neighborhood is watching and the police are there. Oh, yeah. And she's like cut her hand on something and the paramedics are trying to wrestle her down, but she's obviously on something because she's resisting. The JD is looking on and then the grandmother comes up and turns him around and grabs him and says, like, look at me, look at me, like, don't look at that. And it, even now I'm tearing up talking about it because it was so powerful because the grandmother wasn't perfect, right? But she just, she had to protect this boy and it wasn't, and she wasn't saying a bunch of like, it's going to be okay. It'll all work out. It wasn't anything like that. It was just look at me. Like in this moment, this is what you need to do. I was very impressed by Glenn Close and Amy Adams, um, but I like, I really love oh, that. Oh, starting again. Well, that's that's also, they have, um, he's he's totally, you can see he has a very special connection with his grandmother. And then there's the part where the sister's like, you're so hard on mom, but what do you know about the home she grew up in? Like, that one was crazy too. I don't say like crazy. Yeah. But like, she did some pretty nutty stuff went on in that household. Like, what kind of house do you think produced this kind of person? And not, and it's not judgmental. It's just like, it's just open your eyes is basically kind of what it's saying. Right. That's all. Well, that's right. what it seemed felt like, at least. So, yeah, um, really so, interesting stuff. Yeah, and that scene is probably so. We put violence at a two. Um, so there is that scene where the mother is going crazy and being wrestled to the ground by the paramedics. Um, the grandma in that flashback when the sister Lindsay tells JD. What kind of home do you think she grew up in? We, sh we see that gram. I'm, I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous, but these are real people, so it's not ridiculous. But she lights the grandfather on fire oh, yeah, because he's been drinking and yeah. running around. Yeah. So there are these moments of family violence, and they're stark, though they're not gratuitously focused on. It's it had. It's not quite gritty, but it's very real. Yeah. Um, so we put it at, at a two. Uh, language is a four because everything is said. Yeah, just all, all the words. words. Yeah. Um, but romance, like you said, they have this relationship. But like even the mom who is definitely the kind of person who sleeps around, we don't see her sleeping around. Yeah, we didn't which, need to, which is why they got that part right. We got it right. without having to show it. Thank you for trusting us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. I do think the only – so I really enjoyed the film. The only issue I had with it was just that I was hoping to see – in the book, he shows a little bit more. He says, like, they live in Ohio, but they go back to Kentucky a lot. Oh, yeah. And you get to see the the family that still lives in Kentucky a little bit more. And I would have liked to see a little bit more of his youth. Like, the the movie was so much about – him older and with his mom already strung out and what i liked about the book was sort of showing the progression and in the movie we were already there yeah so i did miss getting to see like the one time that they are down south in kentucky when he's like 12 you know they go there for the funeral once and then they when he's 12 and like these other kids are picking on him but he tells these really he always talks about it as being some of the best times of his life yeah. so it's too bad that we didn't really get to see any of that. Yeah, it opens with that. Yeah. And it's actually, the film yeah. came, it's under two hours, which is also very impressive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, when was the last time that happened for a drama? But, That's true. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, I loved it, and I think we both highly recommend both. We recommend the movie and the book. 
Yeah, just be honest about what it is and don't don't fall prey to people who are like, oh, there's other books. Read the other books too, but don't not read this right. also. Yeah. Right. It's really not political. It's just an interesting story about a different way of life and it's well written. And and the book and the movie was good. And so if you already canceled your Netflix account because of cuties, get a friend or we sign up for a month or something. It's worth it's worth it to get Netflix again because they put something like this up there yeah but they'll probably disappoint us again soon so oh yeah so get it for a month for <laughs> <Yeah>. sure <laughs> i'm sure we'll be disappointed again soon and we very much look forward to that so we can trash netflix again <laughs> yay <Yeah. laughs> we still should talk about cuties one of these days i have Ugh, i have I thoughts I, okay i'm gonna have to really fortify myself for that one that's fine don't eat the day beforehand yes yeah, probably for like a week beforehand so there won't be anything to <laughs> that's a lovely note to end off on <laughs> yeah it is um I did have one more thought on the uh, on the book wall because you know those like coffee table books. I think that might be really good for the foundation. So I'm gonna go rustle some up, but I have to actually go upstairs uh -oh. for those. Okay. So I have to fortify myself for this trek. So, dear listeners, thank you so much for being here. But I have an adventure. She did. Yes. I'm gonna have to make sure that everything is sealed properly when she goes up. Okay. We'll catch you later, guys. And girls, Oh My Word podcast is brought to you by the Pearl Clutching Basement Dwellers at Oh My Word. Follow us on Instagram for updates at Oh My Word Podcast or like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For full episode notes and detail, visit eltenabaum.com. Music is by Tim Burke. Sound is by Gabriel Yaffe. See you next time. Mm -hmm.